which happened to suit them to prevail over the opinions of the scientists who had drafted and submitted their final report. And so this is what appeared. And I think that's an outrage, ladies and gentlemen. I think it is a disgrace that science should thus be rewritten and that then they should dare to tell us that a consensus of 97% of scientists agrees with them when, as we now know, by researching that fact, it is actually just one man. It's an outrage. So let's move on to the next of the three reports. This is the 2001 report, the third assessment report. And here you'll know about this, but I'm going to show you how they did it. In the 1990 first assessment report, they had shown that the medieval warm period, that camel's humpback, there, uh, was quite a bit warmer than the current warm period on the right, with a, the little ice age where the sun became very inactive in between the two. That's a reproduction of the schematic from the first assessment report. And as you can see, once again, this was not really what the bureaucrats wanted. But what he was saying is, well, we've got some warm weather, but it's nothing like as warm as it was a thousand years ago. So then, Ken Overbeck one of the IPCC scientists actually wrote to Professor David Deming, who had just had a paper on how you measure temperatures before instruments came along, published in Science, this was in 1995 by the stage. And he said to Deming, not realizing he wasn't part of the plot, we have to get rid of the medieval warm period. Not we have to check whether there was one or check how big it was. We have to get rid of it. That's what they're doing. They're rewriting the science. And so if you just wait 11 years, watch the screen. This was their revised graph. <laughs> Suddenly, a huge uptick in temperatures in the 20th century, actually exaggerating by 50% the real amount of warming over the period. And also, they've removed the medieval warm period. All gone, just like that. Magic. Here's how. They reconstructed the pre-thermometer temperature record by using tree ring data. They would cut down trees, they'd have a look at they'd count the rings, and they'd see which ones were thicker. And they would say the thicker ones meant warmer weather. But the IPCC itself had said, don't do it that way, because thicker tree rings, wider tree rings, can also mean wetter weather, and it can also mean there's more CO2 in the atmosphere. So you will get a distorted result, which will tend to show the 20th century as being exceptionally warm if you use tree rings. They are an unsuitable uh, data source. And thing number one, they use an unsuitable data source. Then, for each tree ring set that they used, if the tree ring set gave them a nice hockey stick shape with a long uh, shaft uh, that where there's no increase in temperature or no decrease either much over the last thousand years, and then suddenly the blade of the hockey stick is this sharp uptick that happens in the 20th century, they would give such records 390 times more weighting in their model than they would the ones like the one at the bottom, which show no such helpful change. So they selected the data to bend the result, one of the oldest and cheesiest statistical techniques. But that's not all. That's two things wrong so far. What they also did was the computer program that processed all this data was trained in such a way that even if you put random red noise, which is a kind of random data, got nothing to do with anything, into that model, it would draw exactly the same hockey stick shape as if you put in their own tree ring data. But even that wasn't enough to wipe out the medieval warm period. They used bogus data. They used it in such a way that those are the bogus data that suited them better than those that didn't were given 300 times 90 times as much weighting. They fed them through an algorithm that was going to give them a hockey stick shape, abolishing the warm period and exaggerating the 20th century anyway. They also found that after all that, the little faint grey line that you can just see on the left of this slide is not very clear. That was the line that the actual use of their data produced, even using their bent model. So what they did without saying so, in the paper in Nature that eventually went into the IPCC's uh, third assessment report, was that they simply left out their own data for each of those tree rings for the medieval warm period and substituted random numbers of their own that gave them the abolition of the warm period that they desired. 
And so when you put back the real numbers, as two Canadian researchers did in 2005, then you get the black line and you see MWP, the medieval war period, immediately reappears using their model and using their data, but not using the bogus data that they had invented. That is the length to which these people have gone to bend the graphs, bend the data, bend the science, artificially to create the supposed climate <coughs> problem of today, which is in fact even less bad than the medieval war period, which, as David showed you, is real, is global, and is warmer than the present. So then we'll take one more IPCC document. This is the most recent of the four, the fourth assessment report, 2007. And their central conclusion was that the rate of global warming is itself accelerating and we are to blame. And they said this three times. Now we're going to see, once again, we're going to check whether they're right. And for this we're going to set sail on a voyage of mathematical discovery known as a heuristic. Don't worry, I'm your captain. Fasten your seatbelts, fold up your tray tables, and we'll set sail. Very short little voyage of mathematical discovery. Here is a sine wave. You will have seen these at school. The important thing to know about a sine wave is that I propagate one from left to right. Ad infinitum, it will just go up and down like this, up and down like this, all the way. It will never deviate from, essentially, a horizontal line. The trend of a sine wave, as we boffins call it, is zero. It neither goes up nor down. It just continues on forever in the same direction, either side of that central line. However, if we take just one segment, one little piece of that sine wave, and we take the trend of that, as we do now, starting from the extreme left-hand end and going all the way to the right, then there is, in fact, uh, apparently, a slight downtrend. If we start still further to the right, choosing our starting point very carefully, it makes it look as though we've got a still steeper downslope. These are correctly calculated least squares, linear regression trends. That's a way of getting a straight-line trend out of data that goes up and down. And now we do it still further to the right and still further to the right. And what appears to be happening is an acceleration in the rate of decline in the direction of this sine wave, even though we know by definition that this can't actually be happening. So we know from this that it's a bogus technique. And we can show how bogus it is by shifting uh, our segment just half a cycle to the right. And then we get precisely the opposite. Now we've got it appearing to accelerate ever more rapidly upwards. Now you may say, what has this got to do with the climate and IPICAC's fourth assessment report? Well, the answer is in the picture you're now going to see on the screen. Hold on to your hats. We're returning from our voyage of mathematical discovery. We've learned that this is a bogus technique. Now watch. Isn't that amazing? They even used the same colours I did. <laughs> and what we've got here is the graph from the Hadley Center of temperature change over the last 155 years, that was 161 years now. And they've quite correctly shown in the red line there the long-term trend in the data. It is upwards, but not very fast, about 0.4 Celsius per century. So it is an uptrend. We have got warming. In fact, we've had 300 years of global warming, as those knickers on the line proved earlier. Uh, but here we've got a suggestion which is stated explicitly three times in the report, where they use this graph three times, big and in full colour, that the rate of warming is itself accelerating. And the only reason they state that conclusion is that they take the ratio between the different trend lines shown here, and they say, this is all our fault. Well, that is an entirely bogus technique, and it is therefore an entirely bogus result. And again, it's an outrage that an intergovernmental body charged with getting this stuff right should not only get this wrong, but then when I approach first Dr. Pachori and then Dr. Manning, two of the senior scientists in charge of all this, and I say, you've got this wrong, neither of them can tell me it's right, but neither of them will lift a finger to admit they got it this badly wrong, because this is their central conclusion. If they were to admit that this is as wrong as it is, they would have to admit there's no basis for the conclusions that they draw about what we have to do to save the planet. That is how seriously, and yet how crudely, we are being misled. 